the Sermon on the Mount continues. Welcome back to chapter 6 of Matthew. A lot of amazing teaching in here today by our good friend Jesus. Let's pick it right back up where we left off. So the very beginning of chapter 6 opens up with some really good instruction on doing good to please God and not man. Look at verses 1 and 2. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them, otherwise you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. You know, I've known so many people over the years who do stuff like this. Anytime that they are doing some charitable thing for another person or an organization, they announce it everywhere. Now listen, I am not saying that there's not merit in letting people know about a worthwhile cause. I think raising money by letting people know about needs is a wonderful thing and should be done. For example, our church recently raised money for relief efforts towards some of the hurricanes that have hit parts of the U.S. this year, and at the end of the campaign, the church let us know the total amount of money that was raised. That's great. What's not great is when someone uses that as an excuse to go and brag about how charitable that they are. What Jesus is talking about here is not being boastful about what you've done. You know, the same thing holds true in business. I have noticed that many times over the years, the people who brag the most or the ones who really try hard to convey that they are successful usually aren't. The most successful people I've met don't go around bragging about it. In fact, I've noticed many times the people who often give the most also do so in secret. It's not about proving anything to people. It's simply about doing good. So what is the point that Jesus is making here? When you do good things for people, do it because you love them. Do it for God, not for the praise of men. All right, skip over and let's look at verses 5 and 6. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Now, do you see a pattern here to what Jesus is teaching? Even though it's a different topic, the point he makes in the beginning is the same as it was for giving. When you pray, do it for God and not just to look good to others. Now, is there a time to pray in public and with others? Certainly. But look at the instruction in verse 6 as well. Go into your room, shut the door, and Jesus calls this the secret place. It's just you and God and no one else. This is what God desires so much from us, that we would get to know him personally and private for no other reason than the fact that we love him and we want to know him more. Listen, I tell people this all the time, but there is not a formula for prayer. It's simply conversing with God. When my son comes in to talk to me, he's not like, oh, precious Father. I come before you unworthy to behold your glory, but lay myself prostrate before your throne that you may hear my need. So many people's problems is that they feel embarrassed to pray for fear of saying the wrong thing. Just talk to him. If you're struggling with what to say, then in verses 9 through 13, Jesus even shows you a sample of what prayer looks like. Guys, if you remember nothing else from this video, remember this. Always take time to pray privately with God. The closeness with him that you develop from doing this cannot be measured. All right, let's look at one last passage of scripture. This is verses 25 through 27. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? You know, worry is something that paralyzes people. It's something that when it attacks you is really hard for people to deal with. Now, I've noticed for myself as well as others that worry tends to hit you the most right before you're about to lay your head down on your pillow. See, the devil doesn't fight fair. He tries to attack you in a moment when you're vulnerable and alone with just you and your thoughts. Okay, so pause here for a moment and put yourself in this situation. Let's say it's late at night. You have a situation that you're dealing with. You're trying to go to sleep, but suddenly the devil brings a picture of this issue to your mind and you're tempted to start worrying about it. What do you do? Well, let me tell you something first. We just read that Jesus himself told us in verse 25, do not worry about your life. Jesus would not tell you to do something if it wasn't possible. You can literally give the situation to God, not worry about it, and go right to sleep. How in the world can you do that? Well, let me ask you a question. Do you remember two chapters ago in Matthew 4 when the devil tries to tempt Jesus? How did Jesus respond every time that the devil brought something to his attention? He responded with, it is written, and then quoted the Bible at him. It's the exact same thing that you need to do. When the devil brings a picture of that thing for you to worry about to your mind and he tempts you to start fretting about it, you need to quote the word at him. Scriptures like, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. In Philippians 4, it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by 
by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. Now, how do you think I have all those passages memorized? Because I've dealt with this myself. I have issues that the devil tempts me to worry about, but when he does, I quote these scriptures at him. I will literally get out of my bed, pull out my Bible or some note cards that I've written these verses on, and then I read them out loud to myself and to the devil. I do exactly what Jesus did, and I quote God's word at him. Now, does this immediately work the first time that I do it? No, it usually takes a night or two, but then I stop worrying. It's the same thing when the devil tempted Jesus. He didn't go away immediately, but Jesus keeps quoting the Bible and the devil gives up. Guys, I'm telling you, there is power in the spoken word of God and every bit of it is for you today. Man, oh man, this is some good stuff. All right, boys and girls, that is it for us today, tonight, whenever you're watching this. Thank you as always for joining us for chapter six. Tomorrow is chapter seven and the last part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. As you can already guess, it's more amazing stuff you do not want to miss. Hope you all have a fantastic Thursday. I love your faces. We will see you back here tomorrow.